Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. From the time that I began climbing into 18-wheeler semi-trucks to sell my 16-year-old body for $40, my belief system was strengthened in one thing. I believed that I was of little or no value. I'm not reading from a dime store novel. I'm reading from the book Escaping Hell by my friend Michelle Steele. I know you've seen us on television before preaching the word and you see this beautiful woman of faith sitting here I call I, when I call her on the phone I say how is the mighty woman of faith today or something to that effect and so you know I, I said it before I, ha I had trouble reconciling the two things you know how could this Michelle and that Michelle be the same but they're not they're not, they're not. one died and one's alive unto God so when I read things about this, you were pregnant and prostituting at the age of 16, and you said something really um, important here, which, you know, and a lot of people feel that, whether they're prostituting or not. I believe that I was of little or no value. And that leads people in, to, I mean, that's a painful thing anyway, to think that you don't matter, that you have no value, to the, you don't matter. I mean, that's painful in itself. And then you, all these other things happen to you. And so when you get stuck in that, I mean, that lead, it definitely leads to self-destruction. But that's not what God thinks about us. No. That's not what God thinks about us at all. And a lot of people that are in that position that you were in think that I've done all of these horrible things and God hates me. I heard people say that. I heard yeah. my, my own family members say, say that God hates me. He's embarrassed by me. But God doesn't hate us. God doesn't hate you. God loves you. It doesn't matter what you've done. He can love you no less than he does right now, and he can love you no more. He just flat loves you. He loves you because he created you, and it doesn't matter what you think about yourself. What God thinks about you is most important. And you are valuable and important to him. No matter what pain you're experiencing, no matter what your self-esteem, we use that word, you know, self-esteem, what do you think about yourself, what you've told yourself, or what other people have told you. You are valuable to God because you're his creation. And the only one, let me say this real loudly and clearly, the only force on earth that tells you you are worthless and have no value is the enemy. Jesus said that Satan was a liar from the beginning and he has lied to you and it's time for the lies to stop. And that's exactly what it is. It's the lies. Why? The Bible identifies how Satan works. He blinds people's minds with lies, with deception, and from a child, I had been receiving these lies. We talked about it in, in the previous broadcast about how there were different things that, that were triggers, that were yeah. sabotage uh, occurrences, if you will, that put me in that place of thinking that I was worthless. Even though I had everything from this affluent family that I lived in and I, I had all that, that money could offer, it looked like I was set up for success, but on the inside, I, because I believed the lie of the enemy, on the inside was that self-destruction. And that was a, a pivotal moment for me when I, that was that entry into the prostitution. Before that time, I, I really hadn't been addicted to drugs. 
I had, I'd done some drugs. I'd played around with alcohol. I had ran away from home. I broke my boyfriend out of jail, out of, out of <laughs> penitentiary. Criminal we, activity, uh, prostitution. We, we went on the run all across yeah. America. I mean, there, there were, uh, there was a lot of destruction, but that moment when he had put that pressure on me to prostitute, I was pregnant. I was 16 years old, pregnant with his baby. And he is, is, you know, manipulating, pressuring, you know, promising me all these things if I will go prostitute. And it was as I, I remember walking out that out of the car through that parking lot on that first time. And the whole time on the inside, I'm screaming, what are you doing? What yeah. am I about to do? And he had rehearsed with me what I needed to say, how I needed to approach it. And how to avoid the police. How to avoid the police. But nothing prepared me for the, for the shame that, that entered into my heart as I, as I went through the process of prostituting. And that began from that time at 16 until the time that I was born again at 23, uh, I prostituted for the rest of that time. And it, I, I explained you know, a lot of people think that people turn to prostitution to pay for their drugs, but I turned to drugs to deal with the shame wow. of how I was living and what I was doing. Do you think that that is one of the primary, I guess the word would be motivators for people taking drugs and getting on drugs and alcohol? It's like self-medication. It's treating yourself with something because you can't deal with what you're feeling inside. You can't deal with what you're, uh, the pain that you're experiencing. So it, it numbs the pain. It dulls the pain. You can't deal with what you've done. So now your conscience mm -hmm. is hurting as well as everything else. I made the statement during during my time in drugs, I made this statement, I will never be sober another day in my life. My. And I would, if I did not have money to get drugs, and if I could not get alcohol, I would go to the drugstore and steal NyQuil just to be able to drink the whole bottle of NyQuil and sleep for a day. Just to escape because I was so determined to to... To, to leave the pain that was constant. And so I just want to encourage you, if you, I didn't even realize what I was doing at the time. I didn't realize that it was pain that was driving me to this vicious circle. But if you're watching me today and you find yourself in this vicious circle, I want to encourage you. You can leave behind that life of pain and self-medicating that pain by turning to the one who identifies the value that you really do have. You won't be able to find your value without Jesus. We won't ever be able to identify it. We won't be able to discover that we have value until we look at the price that God thought we were worthy of to deliver us. When Jesus died on the cross, God did that because you're worthy of Jesus' death on the cross to, to deliver you out. I didn't identify my value until I could see what God did to, to free me. He did that because I'm valuable to him. Yes, yes. And, and so that's a, it's a lie of the enemy. And it's a deception that blinds the mind. And that lie is in the entertainment industry that, that mm -hmm. causes people to look at women as sexual objects. It's in uh, uh, relationships that people have that they will, they will ask, why do you stay with somebody who beats you? Yeah. You know, my first husband beat me. He, he came home from drinking. He came home so drunk one night. He woke me up to beat me up. I was sound asleep and he came and woke me up so that he could beat me. And I was so angry that I decided he finally passed out on the floor. Our bed was on the floor and it was in like a closet. It was just a little tiny dump of a trailer. 
And so we, it, I, there was a, cur, a, a um, closet rod above the bed. I took a hold of that closet rod and I jumped on his head because he had woke me up to beat me up. I was so angry. I'm telling you, it was crazy. (laughs) And he shot. He, he, He got his gun and tried to shoot me. And thankfully, it missed my head and shot a hole in the roof. And then he beat me up and and threw me out in the snow in my pajamas. And so here I am. uh, That I went back to him the next day. Well, something happened because you can laugh about it now. See, I can, I can, so you can laugh about it now, you know, but that, that, that shows that something happened yes. because the question, you know, just begs itself, which everybody asks that doesn't understand this. They said, why did you stay with him when he acted that way? Why His did own you family leave? asked me that. Why would you go back to him after he beat you yeah. like that last night? Yeah. And I, because I didn't think I had any value to go anywhere else. You see, that's part of the devil's lie. That is so much part of the devil's lie. You are not worth it. You deserve what you're getting. And a lot of times people have done things. I mean, you know, and and there's spousal abuse. There's uh, uh, men and women are subject. I mean, abuse is abuse. It doesn't matter whether it's man or woman. Abuse is abuse. And so when you allow yourself to be abused, you're saying I, I don't think I'm worth any more than this. It's somehow okay. But you know, one time, and this is, this comes nowhere near what you experience, okay? But I, I was in a situation where people kept treating me disrespectfully. And I don't mean I go places and I demand respect. I just mean that what they did was rude and disrespectful on a continual basis. And so I was upset and I would just, cry and tell God, um, you know, why did this happen to me? I mean, that's a millennial. Why does this happen to me? You know, and I was praying about it and God spoke to me and he said, I don't expect you to be treated that way or to put yourself in a position to be treated that way. And I went, what? I don't expect you to put yourself in that position. I don't want you to be treated that way. And I thought, well, then why am I doing this? So for a while, what happened is God led me to just stay away from the people, the situations, remove myself. Because if you're continually there where somebody is saying, you're not, you're worthless, you're not worth even looking at, you're not worth speaking to, we're just going to ignore you. You may be here, but we're just going to ignore you. You know, you continually put yourself there, you start believing it even though maybe you didn't believe it previously. Now you believe it. You've been worn down until you just think, well, I'm just what I am. Yes, yes, and that's exactly. And people don't understand that with uh, abuse, spousal abuse. They, they don't understand that, well, I can deal with it. I mean, after all, he's only yelling at me like that and only throwing things at the wall. He hasn't hit me. Oh, I can feel it right now. The church people are going, what is she doing? <laughs> What is she doing on this program talking about that stuff? It doesn't happen in Christian homes. You pastor. Yeah. It does happen in Christian homes. But you stand there and say, well, it's all right. He didn't hit me. He hit the wall. It's all right. This happened. That happened. It's all right. It's all right. And you keep making excuses till finally it's just, well, he only hit me once. And it just progressively builds until finally... You, you, where you were here, you are now down here and you don't respect yourself somehow. And you, you're, you're dealing with the pain of it. You're shutting it out. And I know, you know, the things you're talking about, this is a difficult stuff. Yes. This is hard stuff to talk about, but there are people that just tuned into this television program or this YouTube, wherever where you decide to post this, they just tuned into it and they're thinking, Man, that's where I am. That's what's happening to me. I've got good news for you. You are valuable and precious to God, and being told that you're not is a lie of the devil. And anyone that tells you that is just repeating what the devil says. But the only place that you will find your true value is in God. And when the Holy Spirit reveals himself to you through Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, 
And as a Christian, when the Holy Spirit comes on the inside of you and shows you in the Word of God who you are, what you are, and how He gave His only Son for you so that you might be free, then you can walk free of that. God will give you the answer. Now, <laughs> we said on this program we were going to follow the Holy Spirit, didn't we? Yes. I have dealt with women before, actually some who that were my friends, that had men who took care of them, had lots of money. They call them sugar daddies, okay? And all the money in the world can't pay and can't fix when you're having your face bashed in and all these other things are going on. And I have watched people, watched women go down, 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 down because they didn't see themselves the way God saw them. Let me tell you something. Self-respect and knowing who you are in God is more valuable than any dollar sign you can put on anything. And you may think, well, I don't know what I would do. Where would I go? And some of the people that I have dealt with, their um, abuser was in high up places with organized crime. And they knew that if they attempted to leave, that they probably could be murdered or worse. There are worse things than dying. <laughs> so, so I'm telling you here today, just like we said last program, if you didn't see last program, you need to see it. But I'm telling you, there is a way out. There's a way of escape. There is a way. And God has that way. You say, you just don't know my situation. I don't have to know your situation. There is a God in heaven who has angels at his disposal, and he's waiting for you to say, God, I don't know how to get out of this. Help me. Help me. That's all it takes. You don't have to pray a, a nice religious prayer, our Father who art in heaven. You don't have, all you have to say is, God, help me, no matter where you are right now. And the God of all heaven who created the universe has all power, and he will find a way to get you out of your situation. When in my book I talked about the first time that he beat me, and, and uh, when I went back to him that first time, I was telling him, I'll let you do it, not, not meaning to, yeah. but the fact that I came back to him that first time, I was 15, 16 years old, 15 and a half, I did not know enough. I had just ran away from my parents. I couldn't go back home, I thought. You know, in my mind, I had shut that door. I didn't want to live on the streets. I, I felt under the pressure of, I don't know how to fix this. Yeah. So going back to him seemed like the easier fix. But what I was, I was sending the signal you're going to be able to do this again because I'll let you do it the first time and here I'm back with you the next day. But, you know, through the progression of it, you use the phrase, people get worn down. And I talked about this in the book as well. There came a day I, I would run away from him and he would threaten me that I would never see my kids again because over this mm -hmm. time of us being together, him prostituting me, there was that the first time, you know, he, I got pregnant while we were on the run. And then the second time I got pregnant, I was not prostituting during that time because of the drug overdose I'd had. And I, uh, so I got pregnant with his child, our second child. And, um, during, during that, he, he would threaten me. You'll never see the kids again. I'll hunt you down and kill you if you ever leave me. And I would, I, he would beat me and I would try to leave him. And one day I got away from him and I went and I, I rented one of those like weekly uh, hotel rooms mm -hmm. and I had drugs that I was doing and he hunted me down and found me multiple times. He hunted me down and found me. But this time I had been taking these Valiums and they were, they were just, you know, when he, when I saw him walk up the door, I took a handful of them because I thought, okay, yeah. he's going to be mad. He found me. I've been on the run from him for over a week, and he has hunted me down. And when he came in, 
he started walking around looking to see if there was evidence of another man or whatever. I was, I didn't have anybody else who knew I was even there. I still don't know how he found me. And he picked up a knife and brought that knife over and he laid that knife against my cheek and it cut my cheek pretty bad. It began to, but I just didn't even flinch. It, it was the breaking point for me. I didn't care. Like, kill me. I don't care. I, don't care. I, I mean, it had worn me down yeah. to such that place. And, and those volumes were kicking in. I just glared at him like, go ahead and kill me. And in, when he realized he couldn't, it, it was, it was, it was just a breaking point for me. I just went over yeah. in a place and it was, that was really a place that even took me more into the destruction. It was a giving up, wasn't it? I, just go ahead. I don't care yeah. what you do. I just, give... I just believe the lie. Yeah. Totally. I'm not worth it. Yeah. I, and, and I just allowed mm. that hopelessness to come all the way in. And it was a breaking point. And it was from that point, I became reckless with my drug addiction. I became reckless with things that I would do. Mm. Why? Well, I didn't care. Yeah. I, it, it had broken my own value down to the point that I didn't care. And even when you have done things that have placed you in a position where you feel like you can't get out, God will get you out. And like Annette said, if you'll just give him an open door, he can't do it without your open door. He's not going to do it against your will. But if you will ask God, help me, it's that simple. If you'll turn to him, he said he'll turn to you. If you, if you invite him, he will come in and help you. It, it, when, when I invited God to come into my situation, it didn't turn around overnight, but it started to get better right away. The first thing that happened was God gave me hope. When, when he, he gave me new life in my spirit, I could live again. I could see the future. There, there was a point in my addiction. There was a point in my life of destruction where I had resolved to go to hell. I didn't think there was any hope for me to even go to heaven. I just knew if I die, I'm going to hell. I'm just trying to, to exist in this destructive chaos. But that's not the plan that God has for you. Can I pray yes, right now yes, with you? Yes. I just want to give you an opportunity to open your heart to God, to ask Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ laid down his life so that you could live the life that God has planned for you. Open your heart to God right now and just say, I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. I believe God that you raised Jesus from the dead. And today, at this moment, I want to ask Jesus Christ to come into my life and be my Lord, be my Savior. Help me in this mess. Help me live the life that you have for me. Help me get out of the destruction that I found myself in. God is coming to your rescue because you've opened the door for him. Yeah. And let's, I want to speak directly to those of you that are listening that your husband is a good church-going man. He goes to church, and yet you're experiencing the very things that we're talking about today. You say, well, I've, I've prayed and I've asked God, listen, this is, this is your call today to get serious. God Help me. Show me what to do. God loves your, your husband too, but God doesn't love the, what he's doing to you. And so at some point, God's going to give you instructions and directions, and you need to listen, and you need to be willing to do whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do. The Holy Spirit is given to you as a comforter, a counselor. You need a counselor. Okay, I'm not telling you what to do today. I'm not sitting here telling you what you need to do, but I'm what I'm telling you is <laughs> the need you have is of a counselor. And Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to counsel us on what to do and how to handle situations. 
all situations are not the same. Some situations need to be remedied by an immediate removal. Some situations are different, but what you need to do is ask the Holy Spirit. I'm asking you right now, would you pray this prayer with me? Holy Spirit, I'm willing to do what you want me to do. I ask you as counselor to counsel me in this matter and show me the exact steps that I need to take and I will be obedient to listen to you, to hear from you, and to follow you. There's some of you that believe your life is in danger. Guess what? The 91st Psalm applies to you, but you also must, must follow the Holy Spirit. I'm reminded of some people that I knew that got on an airplane, and they said, oh, yes, but praise God, I know the weather's bad, but I, we believe in Psalm 91. And they took off in bad weather, and the plane crashed. And say, well, didn't Psalm 91 work? Yes, but the Holy Spirit gave them the sense not to get on the airplane, but they did anyway. It's not foolishness. Jesus is with you. He's on the inside of you, and the Holy Spirit is your counselor. He knows exactly what to do, so heed his words and listen to him now. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. He also said, Satan is the father of all lies, and the truth is not in him. Who are you listening to? Well, Michelle has written an outstanding book that I believe will set Christians free and bring a harvest of souls into the kingdom. I urge you to order this book. And when you are finished, please pass it on to someone else. Or better yet, order two copies. That's offered 2920, the book, Escaping Hell, a true story by Michelle Steele. It's $16 plus shipping and handling. Call 877-396-9400, or you can go to caps.tv. You know, for many years, I taught on the subject of emotional healing, and I found that many Christians were using their faith for physical healing, using their faith for finances, and using their faith for a parking spot. <laughs> but they failed to recognize that you could use your faith to be healed of guilt, shame, and emotional pain. And I'm just not sure that they were aware that Jesus bore all of our pain, including emotions. Now, I want you to have a two-part series that I taught called The Road to Emotional Healing. It will help liberate you from the pain of your past and experience the joy of life. That's offered $22.98, The Road to Emotional Healing. Now, you can get that on CDs, or you can also order it now on a flash drive. If you can go to our website, you can download MP3s. I urge you to call the number on your screen and start your journey of faith now. You'll be glad that you did. And don't forget, you are valuable and precious in God's sight. He loves you. He wants the best for you. He's not mad at you. He wants your prosperity. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, ebooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.